now a sort of update on on uh, my own plays. Uh, I was in in Kendall over over Christmas time, and um, a, few, a few things happened. I, I discovered that the library there has stopped stocking CDs, and um, that's an event. A lot a lot of the situations just seem to continue drifting drifting on. So uh, the the CD walk in Exeter is um, based on looking at uh, HMV and other other places, um, other places where there used to be music retail. HMV th- just noticing how the CDs take up less and less space as time goes on, and um, other sorts of merchandise take over, and um, the the people on the walk discuss what's happening with. Um, a move to digital and whether the same thing could happen with learning with education and um, then also notice all the student accommodation going up and um, ask the question um, how how that's going to work in the long term uh, whether it'll still be needed and uh, in the in the drama there is some sort of resolution to it there's some sort of hybrid um, situation arises so um in the case of music there still are cds which are in charity shops or antique shops they may turn up there may there may be a rethink on cds at some point um whereby the they have a value but at, at the moment they seem to be just a- accumulating in charity shops different parts of the city uh Anyway, I think I think what I'm going to do is is, is work on a version for Kendall as well, um, based on I don't know when there were CD shops, specialised CD shops in Kendall. There is one vinyl shop, um, but I I just don't know that history. But presumably there were uh, places you could buy CDs. But this this um, event in the library, uh, which I think I missed, I, I just missed it. It may it may have happened. In the, within the last year or 18 months or whenever it was anyway I, I can remember the being cds in kendall library and there are none now also um just, just sticking with rea- this is a drama show but the, the reality is the the basis of this sort of drama which is a sort of the verbatim theater based on what people actually said sometime previously so you could do it as a as a sort of chat show, or you could do it as improv, or you could do it as a script. Um, I have I have done a script on how how the conversation went last year, or the year before. Did the script last year anyway, uh, and it change it will change over time. Um, but I guess the other thing is that there there is no student accommodation in in Kendall. Um, no, the, there's um, Cumbria it has has uh, some buildings in um, Ambleside, and the uh, Lancaster's not not far away. But um, I, I suppose you just have to talk about how the how the hybrid model works. If uh, most of it's online, there's there's a college as well, and they do foundation courses, I think. Uh, but anyway, it would, it would just be a different space for the same sort of um, same sort of dis- uh, basic basic structure to a to a script. So uh, that's that's one thing to, to work on. Um, and then the, the other the other the other play that I'm working on is uh, the ruins of the Fortress University. Um, you, you can find bits and pieces of this on on YouTube, but on for new listeners, the background is the lecture about the Fortress University that Peter Horrocks uh, did in uh, Durham uh, four years ago, five years ago, quite a long time ago now, when he was um, launching or explaining the support for FutureLearn as a as a MOOC platform. And um, I, I think there should just be more interest in that lecture and uh, the, what he was saying and what's actually happening now in, in reality. So the, the idea of um, the Fortress University having been abandoned and leaving only the ruins of it, uh, that, that's, that's the basis of that situation. And um, K- 
Kendall has got a very good castle, which is in a suitable state of ruin. And uh, so that's the, the venue for the, uh, for the 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 ruins of the Fortress University. But maybe we haven't got to, got there yet. Uh, so there's a sort of sequence of um, plays, or I think it's a series. It's a it's a TV series in which uh, the first couple nothing much happens, and um, Exeter Exeter Castle could be. Um, a, a place for doing the locations for the, the sort of backstory, but the the main story is probably going to happen the, in the next academic year. So at the end of of this year, twenty two, twenty twenty two, I I think the, the the basis of the ruins will will be more obvious and will sort of plausible at that time. Maybe it's got it's got to be a bit of an in advance of whatever's going on, um, but. I think there will be an event. I think the, the vice chancellor, who hasn't been seen but lives in a tower, there is, there is a tower still quite clearly visible in the in the actual ruins of Kendall Castle. I think he's on he's on a trip to India. Um, that's all we know about about uh, w- what's going on. And um, it, the, going back to reality. Uh, Class Central, who do a lot of reporting about the MOOC scene, they've um, done some stats on last year, and it shows that Swayam, which is a, an Indian uh, MOOC platform supported by the government, uh, has more users now than uh, FutureLearn, um, which I don't think does get much support from uh, the government or... Well, it gets, gets gets some from some universities, but it, it's not it's not promoted or supported in the way that that you'd expect. Um, the financing now fifty percent comes from Australia from uh, Seat Group, who are um, very very intervocational. Well, they're a jobs site, um, so some academics would say the MOOC scene, which didn't make much sense to start with has gone terribly vocational and um oh dear oh dear but anyway that's part of the discussion which eventually will go into um a play with different points of view and uh at least in the script and in theory there will be some sort of resolution by the by the end of it uh 